Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around our world on ThinkTech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Akea. Today, we're looking at advocacy against authoritarianism and direct action for democracy, actualizing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 21, at the Oslo Freedom Forum. The UDHR provides the power of ideas to initiate change in the world, and the UDHR outlines opportunities for a new direction rooted in inherent dignity and inalienable rights. What was very exciting is this week, the Oslo Freedom Forum met, bringing together dissidents from around the world and human rights defenders to make sure that we have a better world that reflects the values, the vision, and the voice of the people. Bunton, what was your highlight of participating in the Oslo Freedom Forum this week? In this forum, um, this is uh, um, connecting with all organizations, with all representatives from every organization, uh, they fight for democracy, for human rights. And we have uh, uh, we have changed experience together. We can work together in the future. I uh, have um, uh, I met with some organization from Southeast Asia, from Taiwan, from Belarus, from uh, Russia. Uh, every organization, they are very, very strong for fighting for democracy and human rights in their country and in the world. And this is my hope of uh, this forum to work with another organization together. Thank you, Buntan. It is important. The theme, of course, was solidarity. And it's exciting to see people coming together from all over the world based on common passions, and more importantly, a direction for how we can head towards global democracy. Feng, what was your highlight of the three-day meeting? Uh, my name is uh, Peng Safsadi, um, president of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos, Chapter Australia. My highlight for me to be at the um, Oslo Freedom Forum, was that um, um, I, I would like to, well, this is the first time for me to join in a uh, force, uh, in solid, uh, solidarity, uh, fighting for democracy. I learned a lot, and um, the highlight for me was that the only NGO representative from all over the world uh, meeting here, and is the opportunity for for me um, to to learn firsthand. Um, my highlight for me um, was uh, the meeting with the um, uh, wife uh, of of the uh, the wife of the uh, uh, Mr. Vlad Vladimir Karam Mirza. Who, who jailed for 25 years by Putin for being the, in the opposition. I, Thank you. Um, I, I, will, I will talk about um, uh, my inspiration uh, with you later. Thank you so much. It is important because we see the, the really the story of love, the story of people standing up in solidarity with one another to demand the most basic freedoms enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Also though, it's a combination. It's speeches with people sharing their inner thoughts and the struggles that they face for a free society. It's connections and conversations in between the different main stage. It's also music and concerts featuring the voice of Tahrir Square Egyptians who sang and demanded the, for their government to leave, and also unique aspects of advocacy and strategy shared. Marcus, what were some of your highlights? Oh, there has been so many, many, many highlights for me. It is very difficult for me to say uh, what's the first. Uh, one highlight is, of course, yes, uh, I've learned a lot of lessons. Yeah, for an example, we know it doesn't matter 
what kind of dictatorship in your country is if it is military dictatorship communistic royal system or whatever or fascistic uh, they are all similar they uses corruption as a, a method to suppress their own people and this this is one of the keynotes we can push this dictatorship co combating this corruption to put tear down all the dictatorships in the world and another highlight is met with fellow people met with good people who fight for freedom for democracy for human rights for the human kinds and being together and healing the hearts of the people who has to suffer so hard for this fight and they has to suffer under their own dictatorships in their own home countries it was so great that the people can stand up and that the message was to this people don't give up never surrender you are the majority the dictators are in a minority so you will win you can't lose you only have don't surrender go on with your fight that was a really good message Thank you. It's true. It, it did ask us to one, to heal, heal our hearts and come together and overcome what many people have faced, but also to stand up and make sure that the world will be a better place and to never give up on those dreams for democracy. What was really important is on the 75th anniversary of the UDHR, we can really reflect on the role of human rights in our daily lives and world affairs. And this came out in many of the panels. The also Freedom Forum does bring together human rights defenders and dissidents for democracy around the world. And what's important when you look at Article 21, that's probably the essence of what people were all there for. Everyone has the right to take part in the government of one's country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Everyone has the right of equal access to public service. And the one that's most important for you, Bunton, is the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government, and it shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections, which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by vote or equivalent free voting procedures. Bunton, what inspired you to first get involved in making sure that there was democracy in Laos and also to connect with other global advocates to make the world one that reflects your vision? Um, I think in Laos first must to change the constitution for democratic, for multi-party system, for fair and um, uh, free election in Laos. Second one, the people have to build a more system with um, a democratic. The people have to learn how democratic system, how we can work with many uh, uh, people together, many ideas together, for new system for Laos, the, put, the people must uh, understand what is democracy. The democracy is new one for the people, the, the long time only dictatorship in Laos in the past uh, time. And uh, the people have to learn how can we work together for um, free election. And uh, the young people have to change uh, idea from uh, hope for um, dictatorship for democratic system. Thank you so much, Bunton. And it's great to understand how we must demand democracy against dictatorships and also recognize how everyone, by utilizing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, can make their country a better place. Bank, sharing a bit, what inspired you to care about this issue and which first campaigns were you involved in? What inspired me, um, even though we are fighting for democracy in Laos, uh, what inspired me was that, um, as we all know, we are fighting against uh, the two big power at the moment, the Chinese by Xi Jinping and the Russians by 
uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, as we know, um, the invasion on the 24th of February 2022 uh, in Ukraine by Russian, um, it, it was a, a, a terrible, uh, a terrible invasion. Um, so now we, you know, uh, I, I think we can join force in solidarity um, with all, all these uh, non government as organization um, to um, to give our voice to to make a, a one voice um, uh, and to let these the two power hurt then um, how to fight uh, against them so they they can realize that um, uh, oh the whole wide world is again against us like you know the icc the international criminal court um um, uh, um arrest um put uh, on arrest on putin but uh how how can we arrest him and so on and so forth but if we can if we can join force and own the government uh on the um on the Western side on the uh, democratic uh, side can join force and uh, really fight against these these two power, and then I, I think I think we can succeed. Thank you, Peng, and really brought up a couple of good points that you really see this conflict in Ukraine challenging the international order that has existed for over seven decades but also that there are new instruments such as International Criminal Court based on the Rome Statute. And it did issue actually an arrest for and calling for a trial of. So the aspect of impunity that was broken at Nuremberg continues to be challenged as we move forward. And if you look at the Oslo Freedom Forum, it looked at a rainbow of solutions that people are taking to try to hold people accountable, but most importantly, save lives and make sure that the people of Ukraine are safe from violence but also the many wars that are taking place beyond Europe that are not getting the same attention, such as Syria. It was brought up that as Ukraine reaches its 500th day, Syrian war is at its 5,000th. So it really is important the way you brought that together. And Marcus, what inspired you to get involved to make sure you could actualize the Article 21 in your life? Yes. Uh... I'm, I think I'm uh, a guy, I'm in the best position uh, of uh, your guests today. I live in a democratic country, we have a democratic tradition and I live well and many people in uh, countries like Germany or, or other countries say, it doesn't matter what's going on in dictatorships, I live in a good country, I have a good position. Uh, what's with me? I say no, that's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Your democracy has to protect, not only protect against enemies inside, from outside too. We have seen in the last years as a dictator like Putin wants to push the war, the polls in the United States, or wants to make influence in the polls in Germany, whatever. That's danger. So we have to do anything. What is the value of my freedom? What is the value of my democracy when I will not support these people who fight in their country for freedom, for democracy, and so many things more. Yeah. Laos is a very special case. I work for Laos. Yeah, I think this is a key country. Yeah, it's very important in uh, many things for other dictatorships because it's a base, it's a money washing machine for them, and, and, and many more. Yeah, so I think... Uh, here is a key position to do anything uh, for democracy, for human rights, and against dictatorship. And I repeat it again. The value of my democracy, of my freedom, is nothing when I do nothing for it. I have to protect my democracy, and, and I have to support other people to reach it, to get it. And so this is why I have participated. Thank you, and it, it really does speak to the principle that was brought up by many of the African countries of Ubuntu, that I cannot achieve all of my rights if you are not able to actualize the rights in the UDHR 
in your community and culture, but also from the main stage yesterday, one person said when they asked them, what could we all do? They pointed out, take care of your own democracy, make sure that your country has strong democratic institutions, that you are informed, involved in making a difference in those, and that your domestic and foreign policy match to make sure that we uphold those principles of peace, partnership for all around our planet. Unton, as we look, can you share with us a bit of how Alliance for Democracy and Laos, and Laos actualizes Article 21 and what actions you're involved in to promote and protect human rights? I know you'll be heading to Berlin very soon, but what does ADL do to actualize Article 21? Um, first one, uh, the, people, the people must know how a uh, democratic, real democracy system in Laos. Second one, the people must learn from uh, example, very good country in the world, which has a democratic system. Um, and the get, uh, get, uh, need um, um, the media must free in Laos. The people need free um, internet, free media, free uh, and press in Laos. And the future, uh, we need that the pupil uh, has in the uh, education in Laos much better. What's really important is you discuss a range of rights from education for all people so that they can be engaging in their community and in the capital level, but also bring up the latest issues of broadband digital equity. Make sure that everyone has access to the internet so they can have all the information to make decisions in the process. Feng, can you share with us how you actualize Article 21 and what actions you're involved with with ADL in Australia and how you've done that in the past at ASEAN meetings as well as in Canberra and Australia and at the Oslo Freedom Forum? Yes, uh, Joshua. Article 21, freedom of expression and opinion and access to information. Uh, none, none of this is happening in Laos. Uh, there's no uh, free press uh, in Laos. It's, um, as we know, um, um, the disappearance uh, of a lot of uh, people, um, um, some forms, um, uh, number one case, uh, known all over the world. Um, because um, uh, people are uh, suppressed, oppressed, and silent. Um, in, in these, in not in, not only in Laos, uh, it in on the um, uh, uh, authoritarian countries, as as we have uh, heard in in the uh, Oslo Forum. A freedom Forum. Um, many, many countries have the same problem with um, the silence of expression, the silence of voice, um, even jail or torture to death. And now we are fighting against that. Now, how how can we join force? Uh, the, the, this is the uh, uh, lesson that I must I, I must learn and and. Uh, continue to um, to join force. Like I, uh, we um, uh, talk about this in um, in UN in 2020, and we talk about this uh, uh, this year, early this year in in Australia. Um, I, I I guess I guess on the democratic world. Uh, know everything about the oppression, the depression of, of these authoritarian countries, but uh, we 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 need to gradually um, um, oppose and and let 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 them um, uh, know that uh, we we are fighting against them, Mark uh, Joshua. 
Thank you. And you bring up the importance and the interconnection of Article 18, freedom of thought, conscience, religion, Article 19, freedom of expression and speech, and how these articles of the UDHR are really tools to transform our society, but also to stand up against dictators in case there's not enough outside solidarity. So those are really good points that you shared with us. Marcus, can you share with us how you actualize Article 21 and what are some of the aspects of actions that you're involved with? Yeah, the uh, problem is uh, that many people in, uh, who has to live in a dictatorship uh, doesn't know on this article. They don't know about uh, free elections, fair polls and, and, and whatever. And this is what we can do, uh, bringing knowledges and education to the people, to all the people. Yeah. Teach them how free and fair elections can work when they don't know when we don't bring it to the people they will never have it yeah and we have to bring it to all people not only to the workers on the field or in the factories yeah we have to bring it also to the people who works for the government to the policemen to the authorities whatever and when they recognize oh shit i've built my own prison i have to change something now i know what really fair and free elections are, then we can change something and then we can build this better world, I think. That, is, that must be the solution. Very true. It begins with education, then mobilization, and then realization for our rights. Buntong, can you share with us what's your vision for a free Laos and making sure that the world can actually have and enjoy all of their human rights. My dream for Laos for the future, Laos must be free, independent country, free from dictatorship a neighboring country like China, Vietnam. Laos will be democratic system with um, friendship with every democratic country in the world. And the Lao people uh, will be very happy to have democratic and free love for the future. And the young people will be everyone uh, to have education. The young people will be in uh, every uh, institution in the world to make something for the future, for democracy, for human rights for protecting the environment in Laos. This is my dream for Laos in the future. Thank you, Buntan, for pointing out that a healthy planet means a healthy democracy and how everything is interconnected. That's absolutely crucial. And it shows the way that we can work forward in solidarity with one another. Peng, what's your vision when you see how Australia is doing in the world and what we need to guarantee Article 21 for all? <laughs> So, uh, Joshua, now, now that we, we uh, have met in Oslo for Freedom uh, Forum, at the Freedom Forum, uh, we, we now uh, have um, a work to do uh, against the authoritarian regime. Um, for, for Laos, I, I think, um as we as we know um um vietnam is the beginning of the uh um of the beginning of the power uh uh in laos and uh, now the chinese um owning uh on on the um uh in infrastructure uh, in Laos, like mining, um, like dams uh, construction, uh, the uh, economic zone are owned by the Chinese company. Um, what what can what can Laos uh, uh, benefit? Nothing. So if if we if we if we can. Uh, um, Get get rid of these uh, um, 
my mining or um, the the Lao the Lao government is doing uh, to to the country, then then what 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 we can achieve is um, uh, the the real uh, Lao people um, work for themselves, not not dominated by uh, the Chinese power or the Vietnamese power in Laos. That, that's what uh, so my vision. Thank you so much of, for uh, sharing about self-determination, that right of self-determination of all people to determine their political destiny and pursue their own economic, social, and cultural future. That's at the core. And that reminds me of the call by the leader of Nicaragua for a justice league of people coming together to have a Congress of those with the conscience to demand a, a really unified movement to overturn the current wave of authoritarianism that's running around the world. Marcus, can you share with us very briefly your vision for the future? People who have knowledge on uh, history uh, remember that uh, in the past, the uh, US government has a so-called domino theory. When I'm one country will fall to the communistic dictatorship, the other one will fall. My hope is that this domino theory will work also in another direction. When one dictatorship will fall down, all the other ones will fall, broke down, and will transform to a genuine democracy. That is my hope. And our work, we have to do everything against every dictatorship. We don't know who will be the first, if it is China, Russia, or maybe Laos in this key position. But my dream is, yeah, domino theory, it must work into this direction, in the right direction. There you go. So it's a rights democracy domino theory shifting in the opposite direction. And that is at the core of the UDH Article 21 that guarantees good governance in every nation and global democracy for a collective planet. The Oslo Freedom Forum is truly a magnet for rights movements, bringing together imaginative leaders for liberty. And we thank all of you for joining and participating to actualize Article 21 in the lives, not only of Laos and in Europe, but around the world, because you know, one movement is that is what matters most that we all come together to make transformation. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.